Yeah, one strategy that I've used quite effectively is uh, to not go to the gym and just bang out, you know, five sets of 35 um, press-ups, bench press-ups uh, in my house. So I have, uh, like I have a kitchen counter that's, you know, whatever height it is. I don't get down and do the full push-up, but I might lean against the counter and do 35 or 40 or 50 of those five times in a day, but, but not five times in 20 minutes, but five times over the course of a day. So I might have an hour rest in between them. And that's a very f efficient and effective way of getting a workout done without having to go to the gym, uh, and, but giving you sort of a complete recovery in between sets. There's a whole new sort of philosophy about training hard, and that is maybe you take longer rest in between your sets. So in the gym, instead of taking a minute or 90 seconds in between sets, you might even take three or four minutes now in between sets. Um, and, and so one way to manifest that throughout the course of the day, if you don't go to the gym and doing these multiple sets of, say, air squats and push-ups in your house, um, just whenever you think about it, you could set a timer or you could just whenever you think, oh, I think I'll bang out a bunch of push-ups right now or a bunch of pull-ups if I have a bar or a bunch of air squats. Um, these add up to uh, a full workout over the course of a day. So rather than going to the gym and spending 45 minutes or an hour doing a concentrated, focused workout, and then maybe getting a little bit too tired because you probably did too much, now you spread that same amount of work out over an eight-hour day or a 10-hour day um, and do it more one activity at a time with lots of rest in between. I think it has the same sort of net effect on your uh, muscle growth and your strength, your power, and you're, re you're recovering more fully in between. So it's probably a more legitimate way, if you think about it, these micro workouts are more of a legitimate way of, of avoiding this sort of overtraining um, uh, black hole that we fall into if we're just like uh, wedded to going to the gym for an hour and I have to be there for an hour and I can't leave in 50 minutes. You know, it's got to be a full hour of work, right? Yeah, this active couch potato syndrome is, uh, you know, I think a lot of people are um, assuaging their guilt by saying, I went to the gym for an hour and now I'm allowed to sit at my desk and, and, and you know, not do much and, you know, overeat um, because I've earned it because of the time I spent at the gym. Well, another way to uh, kind of maybe get the best of both worlds is to, again, spread that workout over the course of the day, um, micro workout, uh, a set here, a set there throughout the day, walking around in between. I mean, I, I, I try to make phone calls when I'm walking to uh, lunch, for instance, or if I'm walking back from lunch, or even if I just take a 45-minute break and I walk outside, that's when I might make a business call. But I'm walking, I'm moving, I'm trying to find ways to move. I don't have a chair at my desk at the house at all. And now I don't even have a, a leaning post. I used to have a leaning post. So I just either have a stand-up desk or a complete low-down sit desk. So I have a desk where I can kneel on the ground, sit cross-legged on the ground, because there's a whole new uh, realm of stretches that we call archetypal rest postures that you can literally be, be stretching fascia and connective tissue and, and ligaments while you're working because of the way you are uh, kneeling or side sitting or cross legged on the floor, not on a chair, but just um, these what we call archetypal rest postures that are sort of ancestral in nature. Before we had chairs, before we had beds and sofas and things, our ancestors were either st standing or sitting or squatting or side sitting or cross legged or whatever. And those have a very beneficial effect on our health. You're suggesting there's a downside that would be that you can't get bigger if you do these micro workouts. And I would suggest that you, that you can get bigger doing these micro workouts. That one way to look at this is that you just, you've taken the hour that, that you would have spent doing a workout uh, in which you might have done 15 total uh, sets combined of whatever you're gonna do. And instead of compressing it into an hour, now you spread it out over eight hours. Uh, you're still doing the work, the muscles are still getting the benefit of, of the overload, um, but you're, now you're allowing ATP to recycle itself fully, so you, some people say it takes three minutes for ATP to, to fully recycle. So when you're doing a, 
uh, three sets of, uh, say, bench presses, you know, in the first set, and then you rest 90 seconds or maybe, um, you know, whatever, maybe two minutes. It's not quite enough to recover the ATP. And then by the time you do the third set, you haven't fully recovered as well. Now the thought is, well, now you've, if you fully recover, uh, that you're getting the benefit of, of maximum work. And by the way, you're not sweating because that, you know, 35 seconds or 40 seconds it took you to do that set isn't enough to generate the, the kind of heat that you're going to sweat. So you could do it with your, you literally could do it in a workspace with a coat and tie on if you had to on a, on a, on a bet. Um, so you're not, you're not sweating as much. Uh, and you're not accumulating this, this overload um, and this potential for um, you know, doing uh, a little bit too much just because you had an hour that you had to fill with, with workout. And I see people in the gym who spend two hours in the gym and are you know, hitting it hard the whole time and leave exhausted and then come, out, come back and do it again the day after day, you know, day after day after day. And there's a point at which you just stop improving. My whole goal for going to the gym is to get stronger and fitter and more powerful and, and burn more fat. I don't want to just go for the sake of doing work at the gym and not benefiting from it. So I ask myself, what's the least, you know, what's the minimum effective dose of work? And one way to do that is to spread that work out over the course of a day. Yeah, it's if we look at the ancestral patterns again they you know they're doing a little bit of something all day long with 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 rest periods thrown in there uh, so one of the metabolic effects of that is you 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 don't drop into this insulin resistance state which you can achieve in as little as 20 minutes of inactivity if you're sitting still you can you can demonstrate some amount of insulin resistance and over time that can be that can accumulate so now you're, you're constantly sort of just, just on the edge of ramping up your metabolism a little bit, enough to certainly um, uh, improve insulin sensitivity because the work that you're doing is more high intensity for short uh, periods of time, short bursts of time. Uh, you know, some, some people would say, uh, I made a mistake and I ate, uh, you know, I ate way too much of this chocolate cake. Um, you know, what do I do? And, and uh, some, some, some of the people in our space would say, well, just do 100 air squats right now. You know, the, the glu you'll burn the glucose off right away and, and uh, you'll get back to that, that uh, metabolic efficiency and metabolic flexibility that you're, that you're uh, seeking. 